Welcome this morning to you all from Eagle Rock and Occidental Presbyterian Churches. A very Merry Christmas to you on this first Sunday after Christmas. Will you please listen to our call to worship? When Jesus is born to Mary and Joseph, God is there. When Jesus is presented at the temple, God is there. When Simeon holds Jesus in his arms, God is there. This very moment, God is here. In the future we cannot see, God is there. Let us worship God together. It is a good and right thing for us to share our hearts with him, to confess our sins. So please join me now in this prayer of confession. Creator of the universe, we stand amazed at your power and glory. We are eager to worship you and we offer our praise, but we are reluctant to answer when we hear you calling our name. We sing our songs of praises and worship, but shy away from the river, lest we be baptized with the life-changing fire of the Holy Spirit. Forgive us, forgive us when we forget your promise to be with us always, O God, and renew us this day with the power of and your ever-present love, and strengthen us to proclaim your justice throughout the world. Amen. And now please join me in our own time of silent confession. 
Let us continue our prayers. Thank you, O God, for hearing all of the prayers of our hearts. Amen and amen. This is the good news of the gospel. This day in Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, we pray all of these things. He is the bread of heaven. Amen. Let us now listen for God's word to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him 
to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and he was devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, you are now dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation of the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. And then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that he will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she <clears throat> at that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to who they were all looking for redemption. And when they had finished everything that was required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Gal Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong and was filled with wisdom and the favor of God was upon him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning to you on this first Sunday after Christmas. A very Merry Christmas to you all. By now you have probably figured out that I am not Eric. My name is Michael Rafina, and I am standing in today for your pastor so that he can have a restful Christmas weekend with his family. We met a few months ago at a Princeton Theological Seminary gathering. I graduated 26 years before he did. That makes me the older guy. I live in Pasadena and am in the middle of my 21st 25th year of teaching and being an administrator at Flint Ridge Preparatory School. I teach ninth grade world history, and I have served the church for the last 40 some years in a variety of ways, and I'm honored to be with you today. The scripture you heard this morning is one that doesn't get a lot of play unless you come to church the Sunday after Christmas. And let me remind you that Christmas is just beginning. It's not over. It's just 
beginning. This is also a scripture which portrays Jesus as a baby who was taken to the temple by his parents for ritual purification and dedication, as is the custom of Jewish law. In this story, we meet Simeon. Let me read to you a more modern description of this man written by my favorite Christian author, Frederick Beekner. Jesus was still in diapers when his parents brought him to the temple of Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as was the custom, and to offer a sacrifice, and that's when Simeon spotted him. Years before, he'd been told that he wouldn't die until he had seen the Messiah with his own eyes. And time was running out. When the moment finally came, one look through his cataract lenses was all it took. He asked if it would be all right to hold the baby in his arms, and they told him to go ahead, but to be very careful not to drop it. Lord, now let us, now, <clears throat> Lord, Thou lettest thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. The baby was playing with the fringes of his beard. The parents were very pleased, and so he blessed them too for good measure. Then something about the mother stopped him, and his expression changed. What he saw in her face was a long way off, but it was there so plainly he couldn't pretend. A sword will pierce through your soul. He would rather have bitten off his tongue than said it, but in that holy place he felt he had no other choice. Then he handed her back the baby, and he departed in something less than a perfect peace that he had dreamed of all those long years of waiting. This small vignette, this story about Simeon, is full of sweetness. An old, old man promised by God to see the Messiah before he dies. This is a story that is tinged with sweetness and a bit of sadness in that the knowledge <clears throat> that the Savior might meet a tragic end. Now, I don't know about you, but holding a baby in your arms is a really, really big deal. It very much is a reminder of what it means to hold on to tenderness, to hold on to that which is fragile, to hold on to a sense of vulnerability. And oh my golly, you don't want to drop the baby. Have you ever held on to a baby yourself? What a miracle. New life in your arms, a tiny heart beating, hope resting in your arms for a child that is wildly abundant with dreams for a bright and glowing future. And to think Simeon was holding on to the Son of God. Master, you are now dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. It is no wonder that his words are so powerful. It is what he had hoped for. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and glory to your people, Israel. Wow. 
Wow. How will things turn out for this baby? We know precious little about his childhood, but we know plenty about his short adulthood. A teacher, a healer, a prophet. His life would divide many and his death would be like a sword piercing his mother's heart. But as you know, and as I know, the story doesn't end at the cross. For we know this baby is going to provide new life for each and every one of us. The fundamental message of Christmas is that we, each of us, are encouraged to take this baby in our arms and to hold on to this child, to hold on to that which is merciful, to hold on to that which is all about forgiveness. Forgiveness and mercy during this season of good tidings to others around us. It is clear from Luke's story that the city of Jerusalem and the temple will play pivotal roles in that Jesus will return to these places many times throughout his ministry. Luke wishes us to understand that Jesus and his family are following the rules and the roles of a traditional Jewish family. Luke also reminds us that Jesus' life will be full of challenges as people will oppose him precisely because he is God's representative. The light of the world will attract the forces of darkness. But let's return to the image that is central to this biblical story. As we ponder these sweet, tender things in our heart, an old man holding a baby, let us remember that we too are privileged to hold on to this sweet, tender child. It might just be that as we hold on to Jesus, we might discover that this baby, this Savior, is holding on to us. Wherever you are right now, God is holding on to you with sweet, loving tenderness, with rich mercies of forgiveness, with the promise of new life. As was spoken over 2,000 years ago, I remind you what the angel says to the shepherds. Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all of the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Hold on to this sweet child and let this sweet child hold on to you. Amen and Merry Christmas.
There are many prayers that we have for many different people that we know in our lives, and we hold them all close to us as we join together in the prayers of the people. Know that God hears everything that is said. Let us pray. Bringer of hope to the nations, glory be to you. We thank you that through the gift of your son, Jesus, we can now be called heirs to the righteousness and children of the covenant. By your grace, we bear the name Christ and are members of Christ's household of faith. We thank you for his call to ministry and for the empowerment of his spirit in our lives, which enables us to respond. We pray that our ministry in this season may be more effective and that it will continue to be effective in the new year that awaits us. We thank you for watching over us in the days that have passed. Take the good that we have done and by your grace, increase it to the glory of your holy name. We are truly sorry for those actions of ours that have frustrated your design for creation. Forgive our failures and keep us from compounding useless endeavors. We pray for those who have overlooked whatever, <clears throat> who have been overlooked for whatever reasons, the lonely, the sick, the maligned, and the forgotten. Give us compassion to reach out and to comfort them and bestow us, bestow in us a sense of your Holy Spirit, which can make them whole. Increase our vision to see clearly the causes of anger, hurt, and resentment and where it is within our power, save us from hesitation. We pray that nations may heed the word of peace that Christ proclaims. Be with all who suffer from human hostility and through Christ break down all of the walls that hurt and divide us. Fill leaders with wisdom and bring humility to rulers. Make us effective witnesses to the hope of Christ's salvation and give us firm resolution to proclaim that you are the redeemer of all the entire world. And now let us pray the prayer that your son, our Lord taught us to pray saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now please note the ways uh, that you can give not only by mailing your offering in, or by seeing what's online. We are truly grateful for all of your gifts and we dedicate them now to you. Let us pray. Eternal God of redemption, you bless your creation and it springs forth with beauty. You judge your people with righteousness and new life abounds. We bring you now the fruits of our labors. Bless the work of our hands so that we, so that what we do reflects the radiance of your love. Fill us this day with your Holy Spirit so that what we proclaim to all people is the new hope that we know in Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Support the weak and help all who suffer. Honor everyone and love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of his Holy Spirit and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the power of his Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>